So tonight with me is Lindsey Graham. And Lindsey's our Morrow County Recycling Coordinator. And she came in and asked me uh, what we could do for composting. She um, got a grant and she got some, some monies to teach about composting and give away some free bins. And I said, sure, we can partner on this. Unfortunately, we have the coronavirus outbreak. So we weren't able to actually have the class and we decided that we would uh, do it as a webinar. So I'm, I'm glad some people signed on. We're excited to be doing this. And we're gonna go ahead here and get started. Like I said, for people that just signed on, at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat box. And if you'd like to uh, ask some questions, feel free anytime uh, during this to type in the chat box at the bottom of your screen and then you can ask questions. So we'll go ahead and get going. So composting 101, it's black gold. It's our first uh, workshop of our five workshop series. And again, thank you for all um, joining us for this new adventure, especially for me, it's my first webinar that I've conducted. So um, thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to telling you a little bit more about composting. So as we said, my name is Lindsey Graham. I'm the Morrow County Recycling Keep Morrow County Beautiful Director. Um, and also here is Carrie Jagger, who is the OSU Extension Agricultural Natural Resources Educator and also Master Gardener Instructor. So for Morrow County Recycling Keep Morrow County Beautiful, if you haven't heard of us, we are a county agency organization um, we are funded fully through grant opportunities. Uh, most of our funding comes from the Solid Waste District, the Delaware, Knox, Marion, Morrow County Solid Waste District. We're funded through, or our coordinator is through the commissioner, so they're our direct um, bosses. But mostly we also take support from local agencies, um, local businesses, and individuals such as yourself. So each year we raise about a $5,000 that helps um, usually sends um, or seed money to get more grant opportunities and also do cover expenses that aren't uh, covered through those other grants. So we're about halfway through that process right now, but we do programming for recycling, litter prevention, education and outreach. So you'll see us out and about at festivals the, oh, maybe this summer, um, some beautification yeah, projects right? and also information. So our recycling piece, you might've taken our recycle challenge this past November, that's our big piece for recycling and litter prevention. Currently we are campaigning for um, posters, which we've extended our deadline for until next Monday and our trash bash, which will kick off. You can register now and we'll be collecting material at on April 25th. With that, we also reach out to uh, four different communities, residents, government, industry, business, and youth in schools. So that's a little about a bit about Morrow County Recycling, Keep Morrow County Beautiful. We're pretty broad, but we are, um, you know, a, a, a green crusader for our environment. With this, she asked Extension to help. And part of Extension is uh, OSU has Master Gardener volunteers. And we have a group of Master Gardener volunteers that have been active in the county since I started. That was one of the goals for them when I started this job was to start Master Gardener volunteers. And every month the Master Gardeners uh, have some type of gardening event. And this month it was going to be the this recycling class and then next month it's also uh, another uh, or composting class and next month it's about uh, composting with worms. So if you're on Facebook, if, if you look here, we've got OSU Extension dash Morrow County is our Facebook page 
and we put all of our events on there. We put Ag and Natural Resources events, Master Gardener events, FCS events, and 4-H events. And then uh, we also have a website, maro.osu.edu, and then our Scarlet and Gray newsletter. So if, if you know someone that doesn't know about us and they don't use the internet, or if you don't use Facebook, um, definitely call the office and you can get signed up to get our Scarlet and Gray newsletter and learn more about the activities that uh, Extension and the Master Gardeners do throughout the year. So why should we think about composting? First of all, Americans generate approximately five pounds of trash each and every day. That is equivalent to, sorry, that is equivalent to about 17 pounds of trash per person per year. That's kind of ridiculous and crazy if you think about it. A lot of that goes to the landfill and, and, and honestly, a lot of Morrow County waste doesn't even get to the landfill. Um, so these is, this is information, um, you know, every five pounds per person. If we look at what actually gets put to the landfill, this is a breakdown of that material generated. Now the date is 2017 and this comes from the US EPA website. If you look at this, um, you know, paper and, and and paperboard is about 25% of our waste that still goes to the landfill. These are easy items that can be recycled. But ultimately, we also need to not only use the easy picking of recycling, but we need to look at the other waste and how can we get those out of the landfill. So for your textiles, they can go to the United, um, you know, uh, Goodwill and um, other aspects of those types of things. We can use our yard trimmings and we can take that to our compost facility here locally. We, and then food, we can also learn how to divert that by looking into composting. So if we just look at the items, the two items that we can compost, food and yard trimmings, that equals 28.3% of this pie. That now is the number one item that, can, that go, is going to the landfill. And so, and it can be composted and turned into what black gold that we can utilize in our, our own backyards. So that is why we are talking about composting tonight. It is very important to look at a bigger picture and also the benefits that we can get um, and utilize and our, you know, get our hands on. So if we look at the items from that are from recycled and compost, so, so we take looking at just what is diverted into or recycling or composting. Um, we're doing a fairly decent job of collecting that paper, even though it looks like we're um, adding more to the landfill. But now we can see we are doing a decent job of yard, of yard waste. So a lot of the mis municipalities, municipalities collect yard waste. So that's an easy way, but that food is at 2%. Now the challenge with food, is that um, about 25, um, about three, per, or we're at 3%, but it is estimated that half of our food waste is actually going, is, is being wasted. So half of our food is being wasted. Um, so that's about 3,000 pounds per second. And all, again, a lot of that food is going to the landfill, um, about that. 15.2%. So it's crazy how much food we are wasting as well. Um, but we're trying to figure out ways that we can capture this, this percentage that we have control over, turning it into a usable product that we can use on our, in our own backyards and on our land. So if that wasn't enough, composting, it could save you money. I mean, you're buying potting soil, you're, bu you're buying additives for your garden, you're buying a lot of these things, and plus you're throwing valuable product in the waste can. Um, it also reduces the carbon footprint. So uh, with the landfills actually love all of this material because it digests, it, it, it breaks down um, fairly easy. It creates methane gas. They're able to uh, bottle that and sell it back to us. So they're making double off of us. It also uh, reduces the carbon footprint because we're reducing less of the transportation of sending this waste to the landfill. Um, but it also saves money because we're not buying those soil additives or amendments. 
we're also um, using it and making it better for the earth. Uh, the biggest key here is that your hand is the last hand to ever touch what you throw in the trash can. And your trash can really does tell a story. So that is the biggest piece and why another reason, if you're not going to do it for that, for your money, um, there is a piece for the environment. So black gold. Uh, if you've ever used true compost, you'll definitely know it's worth its weight plus some. Um, and so that's why compost is called black gold. But so what exactly is it? According to Google, if you look it up, you'll get compost at Wikipedia. It says it's an organic matter that has been decomposed in a process called composting. The process recycles various organic materials otherwise regarded as waste products to produce a soil conditioner. Um, so con compost is very rich in nutrients. So basically in layman's terms, it's nature's natural process of breaking down dead plant material and turning it back into soil. Do you have anything to add there? I don't. Okay. So what we're gonna talk about through um, our, our series is various methods and types. And so these are kind of our key ones that we're gonna hone in on for more of a backyard or um, in-home kind of friendly type method. So we have the open compost pile, compost bins, tumblers, the layer system, vermicomposting, and even trench composting. Some other options um, in, in compost world is windrow composting, aerated static piles, um, digesters, kind of a newer recent one is Pakashi. The open compost or pile or heap, it's uh, the most common and most familiar composting system that we have. It is an open type compost solution and um, there's various types of this. So it's hot or cold. Hot uh, composting methods actually can reach extremely high temperatures, which helps break down that material faster. Um, but these are just more of the common. They are very open, so they do lend themselves to challenges with critters. And we'll cover a little bit more of these as we go through our different series. We've got one on yard composting and manure composting. So we'll get more in depth each month as we go through this uh, series. Anything else, Lindsay? Nope. The compost bin style, it's uh, basically still an open style of compost, but it has some parameters around it. So now you don't have this expanding heap or a pile, you now have a more of a contained area. Um, again, it is an open system, so it can, re it can uh, bring some critters to the pile, but if you, especially if you add food, to the pile, but it is a great option for composting leaves, yard clippings, um, and some other non-food items. So this is a good um, way to even get started with composting. The tumbler system is kind of an in-vessel type. So this means that it is a contained compost solution and you use your muscles to turn it, and the turning adds air to the mix, which aids in faster decomposition. Um, it also minimizes your chance for those pests if you're doing food waste, um, but if you're just doing the leaves and stuff, then um, you can actually get some faster turnaround with just this type of tumbler compost system. A layer system, again, it's another in vessel type compost solution. And this is kind of a layer, like a compost layering. It's the lazy man type, but it's in a container. So you continue to add material on top. And uh, so as it, as it ages, the bottom becomes compost and you'll be able to take that material out of the bottom. Vermicomposting is another food option. Um, and the, it, it's really for your food waste and it's more of an in-home system. So it's a very efficient system and it is expandable. 
So it can go up to eight different trays, or you can even make one very, very cost efficient in uh, it, just a bin. And it's, and basically you're using composting worms to eat all of your food waste and turn it into really, really good compost. And you also have an option for collecting compost tea, which is a natural fertilizer. Trenching. So if you really haven't decided you want to jump on board, this might be something if you're, especially if you're a gardener. So this is a, something that you would utilize in your garden. In your garden. Uh, so you create pathways and you would just dig a trench. The trench is about 10 to 12 inches deep. You fill the bottom with four to six inches of your veggie scraps in your um, your plant tops, you put them in there and you just cover them up. And over the winter, they will decompose and then this will become your new bed for next year as you're, um, you're uh, tilling that in, you're modifying that, so you're improving your soil quality, and then where you planted your plants last year will be your new garden bed. These are the other ones. Windrow composting is especially more for commercial composting or animal waste. You'll definitely see this when, when we talk about your, your animal waste. Um, the aerated static pile is your static pile with a bunch of oxygen forced into the pile to help uh, increase that, the time and enhance the compost. The compost digester is actually an enclosed anaerobic, so it doesn't have oxygen um, system, and it's kind of backwards from everything. So it's not one that is designed for any yard waste, but it can handle a lot of those items that are not able to be recycled or be composted in the other system. So like your dairy, your meats, and your um, bones and some of those types of things. And then Bakashi, it's a more of a science-based, you add an inoculated microorganism decomposition um, chaff or bran to this bucket and it's a quicker process. It becomes a liquid slurry. It is does have some uh, odor to it. And then at the end of that short period of time, it goes into another process where it actually starts to decompose and become that, that final product. So it takes a little bit more science and math to that one um, that a lot of individuals who are not that minded find it kind of difficult. So those are the kinds of, of uh, systems that we're gonna be talking about. Again, we're gonna go into more detail with those into our next sessions. Um, our next session is vermicomposting. So we'll be learning more about worms and the worm composter and the warm hotel versus the flat bins. Um, the following one, May, will be our backyard. So we'll learn more about all of those extra bins. And then further on down the road, we'll do our um, farm composting. And then in August, we'll wrap it up with our how to uh, use our black gold. Use our black gold. There we go. So our fundamentals are there six key factors that help break and turn our products into compost. The first one is heat. Um, and heat really does do a lot of trick, but it's, it also is created by the bacteria and the microbes that are, are breaking down and eating all of the material that you're putting in there. Your backyard compost bin should be between about 90 and 120 degrees. Um, and so they do get fairly hot. If you can put your hand in it and it's warm to the touch, then you really need to work on getting it hotter. So the heat makes the microbes work better and it really does help break down more of the compost and turns it more into that black gold that we're looking for. Next piece is our nutrient mix. What in the world do we put in this compost bin? And so mostly we're gonna learn about our carbons and our nitrogens and the balance ratio and what goes in and what can't. Um, but this is determined how active um, and healthy your compost is and, or your compost bin or your, or your pile and how much the, those bugs and microbes are eating. So the nutrient mix is a very important piece. Oxygen is um it's the turning of the pile it's adding oxygen to your bins 
and it really needs to be done every two to three days. The air and oxygen is kind of like an igniter. So it helps speed up the process and it really is magic. It's like the, it's magic to the compost bin. Moisture is one that tells you how well your compost bin is doing. So if it's really soupy and wet, then you obviously have your balance off. If it's dry, um, you know, it's not going to work as fast. So it really needs to be about a 50% moisture content. And that feels like a wet, damp um, sponge that has been wrung out. So it's not wet, but it's moist. Time, it depends on what time or what system you have is depend on how much time it will take for you to actually get final product. Um, and a lot of the other pieces actually play into that factor as well. But uh, and also play or it plays into there. Decomposers is your fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates. Um, these are the, the decomposers that start breaking down all of your organic waste, and they're, they're the ones that are doing all of the, the hard work that you can't really see um, unless it is utilizing the worms um, that you can see them. Other ones include sow bugs, beetles, snails, slugs, and those other um, natural invertebrates. Um, that found out in the, you know, out in your backyard, especially if you're using a backyard composter. But all together, these types of, all, all together, all six of these things really make the ideal for the best balance to create the best compost um, that we can provide. So it really, they're all interchangeable and they all play a factor. So now we're going to move on to browns and greens. Does anybody have questions yet? Nope, no questions yet. Perfect. Again, for people that may be joined after we said that, at the bottom of your screen, um, you should be able to hover over that with your mouse. And there's a little box that says chat. So if you have any questions as we go along, feel free to type that in the chat box and we can answer those for you. So if you ha are a very beginner, you probably have heard about browns and greens um, ingredients to compost. Browns and greens is your carbon and your nitrogen, or CNN. So carbon is your browns, and nitrogen is your green. And the ideal optimum mixture is to reach a 30 to 1 carbon to ni nitrogen ratio. So for every 30 pounds of carbon you put on, you would put on one pound of nitrogen. And that is to obtain that best mixture goal um, to find that sweet spot in there to create the best um, compost. So carbon rich materials is your dead leaves, your plant trimmings, straws. These are brown items, wood, straw dust, coconut fibers, Newspaper, shredded paper, even tissues and napkins can be thrown in there as a brown. These are carbon rich materials, so they're slow burning food. So this would be like our vegetables and our whole grains. So it takes our bodies a long time to slow or to digest those. It actually adds that long lasting piece as well with our bin. So it's slow burning food. Um, too much carbon will slow the compost process process significantly um, and by adding the nitrogen you'll help speed that up. So again we have to find that happy balance but these browns will slow things down but um, they're also the piece that are typically left out um, or heavy if you're in a home or they're left out if you're in the home composting and they're heavy on the uh, on the backyard composting. So we'll talk a little bit more into that depth as we move along into the other series. Our greens, you can see that, are green. So grass clippings, kitchen scraps, veggies, coffee grounds, our manure, um, but too much nitrogen will make a sticky wet mess. And so these are your fast, fast burning types of things. So these are like for us would be our sugars and sweets. So these are quicker, 
um, digested. And if you get too much of the greens, then they, again, you get this sticky wet mess and then you have to start compensating back and adding some carbons. Um, I think, so basically we have to find this happy balance, again, that 30 to one ratio of browns and greens and your browns are more of your dry, drier materials that are, are dry leaves, are, are, are all dust, shredded papers and those things. And our greens are our veggies and our food scraps um, and grass clippings. Um, next, we're going to look at this um, because that's kind of a hard piece, but yet a very important piece. I did find a short clip video um, composting the, the carbon to nitrogen ratio made simple. Um, do you know how to do that? Yes. I have to put the link in. For them to rewatch it afterwards. I'm gonna have to share it in the chat link. If we can, and then we can also. We should um because it probably can't um because it's not picking up from the microphone is playing from the computer. Can they hear me? Probably. You can kind of paraphrase it when we're done. Somebody wants to know if we can share the graphic on the previous slide. Probably the uh, compost or what's being recycled and what's not. Karen said that she can hear us, just not the video. So we may as well shut it off. It's almost done. Can you guys hear me? Yep. <laughs> Is that Karen? No, it's Joanne. I, of course, I know oh, nothing. This is like a knob. I'm just like pushing all sorts of buttons. Hi guys. Okay. I'll unmute me or I'll mute me or something. Then I'll listen to you guys. Cause I have no way to ask questions other than this way. That's the only way. And I don't want to talk to you. So goodbye. I'll just put you I can you about the uh, video. Well, I can, can't hear the video. That's what we just figured out. Um, so we're going to post the link in the comments and you guys can look at that afterwards. Um, but basically, or um, basically, it's showing a, a good explanation of they're like all carbon items and not all nitrogen items aren't basically equal. 
So they have different values. So with sawdust, it's definitely going to be a, a stronger brown. So you'd use less brown, you'd need less brown to equal that, that 30 pieces um, of, of carbon. So it's just an easier way and a broke out way to kind of look at your carbons and your nitrogens and kind of which ones are, are heavier nitrogen or heavier carbons um, to help you kind of break down that, that balance a little bit more. So um, again, we'll put that link in there. Um, go to oh, keep going. Um, educate recycle education another key factor is to think about as you are doing it is that the bigger the particle that you put into your bin um, or pile the longer it will take to break down. So think about you eating a whole apple How long would it take you to eat that whole apple versus eating the apple that's already chopped up? So you can you can eat the apple faster chopped up than you could the whole entire apple as a whole So that's another factor to think about as you're putting material in Sometimes you want to add something if you're going on vacation or you know oh, Don't want to or or a period of time where you're going to be in law of, of material, you want to leave some things that are whole so that your, your bin is getting fed um, without you adding material, um, or if you want to chop it up and, and you can speed up that process. So just think of that as another factor into the whole picture. So those are the things that we put in. We do this, the, uh, the carbon and nitrogen, you put all of those items in and you find this happy balance ratio. But there are a few things. Um, the rule of thumb is that if it's organic, it can be composted. There is a, a caution to use if you're using waste from either carnivores or omnivores. So that's, you know, basically um, poop. If you're adding poop to your bins, there's an extra caution because it is poop um, to try to make sure that you're incorporating it fully. Um, you're washing the, the food products off of it um, or you know if if you're putting it in your gardens just as a cautionary but the things that you should absolutely not put in your bins is meat and meat-based fats um, unless again you're using that anaerobic digester because that's what that one's made for but if you're not no meat no meat-based fats eggs or dairy plastics plastics don't work plastic stickers. This is something that uh, my little guy, when we got our, our vermicompost bin, he's five, we had to have salad constantly um, and apples and all these things. But then I started pulling out the stickers and I had to have a, a good conversation with him that, hey, plastic is not one of those things that can be um, broken down. And honestly, it's about 500 years in the landfill for it to be broken down. So um, plastic or, or wax coated paper, so that is your uh, cartons, so those need to stay out of your bins. Cooking oils or greasy foods, metals, glass, um, and then you also need to watch out for your invasive weeds, your weed seeds, your diseased plants, and any plants that have been treated with chemicals or pesticides. This could really do havoc on your bin um, or at the end of the product when you have full compost material. Um, you know, some of those might be still residuals. And then obviously bones cannot be broken down with our products, um, especially the vermicomposters. The, the worms can't eat the bones, but our backyard, but our backyard bins can't get hot enough either. Again, this is not an inclusive list, but these are the absolutely ones that definitely are no's. Um, for our composting. I have a comment on uh, plants that have been treated with chemicals or pesticides. Um, I've got a good story. There was uh, a farmer that grew tomatoes in high tunnels and he got some compost, manure, manure compost from a local farmer that had been broken down and he put that in his high tunnel to grow his tomatoes in, but his tomatoes started not doing well, almost like they had a chemical sprayed on them or they had got come in contact with a chemical. And as they, they did the research backwards, the 
the, the farmer had treated the pastures with a chemical, the cattle ate that, or it may have been in his hay. Either way, their food had been treated with a chemical, they ate it, it passed through their system, went through the compost process, and was still in that compost when he planted his tomatoes and it had an adverse effect on the tomato plants. Uh, Lindsay, we've got some, some questions here. Um, someone asked about eggshells. So eggshells are a good, um, you, you're good with eggshells that actually add some calcium into both of the bins. Um, outside, definitely, if you're going to give your, your worms some eggshells, you have to do it, like don't give them a whole dozen. Um. <laughs> right. And I've always, I've always cautioned people too on rinsing them, rinse yeah. that protein out of them so that you're not getting that, that animal protein into your, into your bin. You have any more comments on that? Nope. We have another question. Can pet waste, cat slash dog waste be uh, composted? And I think Lindsay's going to get into that as we move forward. That one kind of gets tricky. Um, again, you're you're adding waste to your to your product, and then what are you doing with the end product? So um, it's not that it can't be; it's just uh, tricky and somewhat discouraged to do some of those pet waste unless you have a specific um, bin for it that is going to be incorporate you know incorporated in a different way. So compost management, this is like for a compost pile. Uh, first of all, we find that ratio is just kind of t walking you through the steps of a, of a bin. Uh, so you mix your browns, you mix your greens together, finding that, that ideal ratio of 30 carbon to one nitrogen. You're always going to mix them and then you're gonna always, always, always bury your greens. And so this is to ensure that there's no odor to the compost pile. And it also, these are your food type, types of items that you're adding. It also discourages those pests and others to come um, and, and, and get into that pit, into the pile or bin. Uh, so it reduces your odors. I have, like I said, we ha I actually have three worm composting bins in my, in my house. They sit in my laundry room and you would never have known that they are there unless I tell you that, that that's what they are. The pile should be warm um, as the materials start to break down. Again, we're running that 90 to 120 degree piles. Um, our, our, our worm bins aren't that hot, but uh, they do get a little bit warmer um, than what you would think. Uh, but they are breaking down and this is an indication that they are breaking down. Some of your backyard compost bins that are black, they are black to attract that sunlight and to help enhance and heat up this heat also breaks down that material faster. Making sure to add the oxygen. So if you're having a backyard, uh, fluff it, adding the oxygen back to the pile. Um, and if you don't do this, again, it's not that big of a deal. It just takes much longer for the material to actually turn into compost. Keep the oil. Much wet is bad, too dry is bad, and so finding that happy balance. And then again, when the material is at the bottom of the pile is dark and rich, um, there's no remnants of the food or yard waste, your compost is actually ready to use. You'll screen out those large chunks and apply and incorporate to your garden or use as a soil um, additive, that potting soil or whatever else that you would use soil for. Harvest time, so you've done all the hard work um, or you fed your, your, your bin for a while. Uh, it takes between, on average, if you do all of the types of bins, on average is four to eight months. Um, and some of them are even up to a year, but some of them can be as quick as four weeks. So it really depends on the type that's best for you, how um, you are managing a lot of the, the inputs and um, adding, the oxygen and some other things. We got another one. Um, we have the finished product should look uniformly um, and dark. It should have no residual of food waste or yard waste in it. It should also smell like rich soil and nothing more. It shouldn't have this disgusting smell. It would really smell like soil. Um, and it should feel crumbly and moist and make, 
and damp like you would um, any soil mulch mixture. Compost has so many usefulness, um, and which again is why we've labeled this black gold. Itself is beneficial for land use. Um, it is a natural soil conditioner. It can be used as a fertilizer. Um, it adds that uh, rich organic hum humus back into um, the, the, the soil layers and it's a natural pesticide for the soil. Um, in a bigger scheme of things, compost is being used for erosion control land bank um, stabiliz stabilization, wetland construction, um, and even fill and cover. So because it's a, it's a quicker process and we can, make, and we can get it, um, nature takes about 500 years to make one inch of soil. We're making soil in you know, a shorter amount of time so that we're able to utilize this. And it's also very rich in nutrients, um, which is what are, are, are needed to a really good product. All right, so hopefully we enticed you to come back and learn more about our vermicomposting and our backyard composting um, and how to compost on the farm. Um, again, we are running, like if you join us for another session um, in tonight's, you know, in tonight's uh, program, we're encouraging you to join two sessions and then your name will be entered into a drawing. Um, and just to ease, if we end up having, are able to go back to face-to-face -face contact, we are encouraging people to attend that August 18th workshop so we can easily get the bins um, to you. So it's trying to get that material um, to the winners directly that night. There will be a variety of recycled or compost bins uh, the, that we've talked throughout the whole entire series that we'll be giving away uh, on that August the 19th place. But if you aren't up to creating your own bin or those things, there are really two local options <clears throat> to compost outside of your home or area in our local area. The first one is utilizing the yard waste or the yard waste facility, I should say, that's located on the backside of the fairgrounds at the Mount, Mount Gilead Water Treatment Plant. And so the, you can bring all of your, your leaves, your grass clippings, trays, shrubs, and branches, um, and you can bring it. It's self-served service. There is no machines there, uh, no commercial use allowed, but please make sure that you're not trashing or dumping on us, no food scraps, barn or animal waste, household items, trash, or those things. Violators will be prosecuted. Um, there are um, people there that monitor this quite often. And so that <clears throat> if it gets abused, obviously it could also be taken away. The other bonus with this is that uh, we do have quite a, quite a bit of people that utilize the yard waste facility. And so by each spring, the, the facility is full and we actually get it mulched. So the solid waste district is, it's, it's ran by, <clears throat> it's funded by the solid waste district. We, we mulch it and then all the mulch is there for, for you to come and, and utilize. So uh, you can come and, and get it. It's not like the highest quality mulch, but it is there for free. Um, while supplies last. Again, there's, you would have to load it by yourself. There are no, ma no uh, machines on site. And again, it is not for commercial use. It is a benefit for those who live within the solid waste district. Just recently, um, Price Farms Organic is, <clears throat> it, they're west of Delaware. It, I, I Googled it, it took about 40 minutes from the, from the monument in Mount Gilead to get to their facility. So depending on where you're at, this may or may not be an option, but they, are, they do collect and encourage residential food scrap composting on their site. Uh, so it's a $2 per five gallon bucket. And so this, you can also buy buckets there for an additional $2 but it's basically a processing fee. So they turn this in and this is a really, really cool facility. Even if you want to go on a field trip sometime, this is a place to stop and look at. So they actually get um, 
animal waste from the zoo there and they create the zoo brew type of uh of a compost so it's it come from there there's a cafe one there's a back a farmyard one um the cafe one smells like coffee it's pretty awesome i love it um and so there's a variety of different things but they're very um it's a very good organic operation or composting operation very fa family friendly um, and do a wonderful job. Again, so you can take your food scraps there, $2 for five gallon bucket. Uh, be prepared that they will actually look through and sort through your bucket to make sure that you're not sneaking any trash in there. They are encouraging you to not postable bags or silverware and those things. Yes, those items can be recycled in, the, in a approved type of compost system, um, but they do also look and mimic regular plastic silverware. So, and then regular plastics don't, don't compost and it creates more havoc down the line in the whole process. So, but uh, they can take all your fruit, your fruits and veggies and even meats at Price Farm. So again, if you want to uh, not do your own composting on your own facility, these are two good local options for you to still divert that waste from the landfill um, and ultimately help fund me because that's who uh, that's how I'm funded. There's a, a lovely little uh, formula that how much is diverted, we get so much money for that from the landfill. So composting and recycling definitely helps pay for environmental education and awareness continue down the road. One note on Price Organics, he does do field trips there um, every year, soil and water and extension do an agriculture bus bus trip. And last year, um, it was actually everyone had retired, so it was my first year to plant it, and Matt and Amanda's first year to plant it. And we decided to stay in Ohio and hit some hot spots in Ohio. And we went to Price Organic Farms, and Tom got right on our tour bus, and he let us drive right through the recycling facility and showed us all the different piles and the zoo was actually making a dump when we were there. And awesome. it's really, it really is a neat place. Um, if, if you want to take a field trip uh, somewhere neat, um, he will, will give you an educational tour of it, tell you all about it. And then you can go there and, and buy the product for your, your yard and garden as well. Again, thank you for uh, joining us tonight on our first webinar. I, we're probably going to do our next one this way as well on um, we're working on some cam enhanced cameras so that we can do some hands-on type of piece with our vermicomposting again that's using worms to compost um basically food waste and so that and then in may we'll see where we're at with the whole status of the coronavirus um and maybe we'll be able to join have you join us um, for our backyard composting but again, participants who attend at least two of the workshops, and Carrie has wrote down everybody who has attended this time. Did we get who our crazy number is? Provided your name was on here. We have a few Samsung phones and iPhones that I'm not sure who those are. Um, and there was one that was a crazy number, but I don't see it now. So if your name was on here, we definitely got it. If you entered your name when you um, entered into the chat room. Yeah. Now, um, one more thing, I did put the link that, for the YouTube video in the chat box for everyone to see that. And again, we just, we thank everybody uh, for joining in tonight. It was, it was fun for us to do this and kind of get everybody's minds off of all the, the crazy stuff that's going on. So we wish everybody a good and, week and- And learn about composting yep. and how to turn your, your waste into some black gold. Um, and, and we're excited that we were able to still continue to do and offer this program um, in an alternative way. Now I would like for you um, to get your, your phones out as um, if, you, if you did our, our challenge, we're going to do a 30 day Earth Day challenge. I had a lot of people, I was just throwing this in here as an extra. Um, because everybody has been requesting for the next challenge. So I thought it would be a great time to um, try to get some, recruit some new people. Earth Day Challenge, anybody who participates um, 
and signs up to take the challenge at morrowcountyohio.gov. There's a link at the bottom of there to sign up. We'll get a, a recycled prize. So, and then we'll have some winners and we're gonna do a photo contest the week of Earth Week, um, which is April the 20th. So that's just a side note. But here's our contact information. If everybody can get their phones out and take a picture, of our of this it will take you to a link for a survey we are again uh this project is being grant funded the the extra bins and those things are being provided by the solid waste district we're doing a compost study as well with highland high school if they come back to school if not we will actually be looking for three is it three Three. three individuals who are really interested to in doing some backyard composting. We have three different uh, compost bins that we're trying to get some information off of, and uh, that information will be shared at our August event. And so we're looking for those three individuals who want to learn more about composting and actually do kind of like be a part of our experiment. So that's a piece there. Um, again, we thank you and we'll give you, is there a way that we can put this link as well, the whole webinar or the whole uh, PowerPoint somewhere? Yeah, we can put it on our website. I can have Liz upload it, the whole web, or the whole PowerPoint up mm -hmm. to our website and yeah. then you can go to OS, uh, morrow.osu.edu and get that. Or you can go back to that uh, morrowcountyohio.gov um, and then go to that services page down to Morrow County Recycling and I'll have it there as well. So uh, that's an option for those and we'll get to there. So again, um, here's our information, uh, recycle at morrowcountyohio.gov and jagger.6 at osu.edu are our um, pages or our email. We both have Facebook, so Recycle Morrow County, Ohio, Keep Morrow County Beautiful, I have two, and Ohio State University Extension dash Morrow County is their web page, or their Facebook. So hopefully you all like us on our Facebook pages and become more involved as well. And then again, reach out at your time to do this survey, um, which is if you hover over with your smartphones, it should take you, uh, you can click it and it says go to the link. And if it doesn't, we'll put that link as well where um, on our Facebook pages with the, with the PowerPoint. And it just helps us to maintain our funding and report back to our, our funders. So other than that, we'll take any last questions that might be, that you might have. And we look forward to uh, our next one, which is in just about a month, April the 21st, and we'll be learning more about vermicomposting. You have anything else? I don't. I just thank everybody and yes, thank you. Wish you a good a good week. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll stay on for anybody uh, for at least a little bit. And if you're done, you can actually just exit as you feel you need to. Oh my God. Yeah, I think that you are the only one. Pest control. They're gone fast, affordably, and discreetly with Beacon Pest Control. Take out better than one day. Call Beacon Pest Control today. All right, welcome back. Join me now is our medical correspondent, Dr. John Torres. John, we have thought that kids were fairly protected from this virus, but I know there's talk about a new study out there suggesting other.